Fiction finalists, Edith Perlman for Binocular Vision, Lookout Books, an imprint of the Department of Creative Writing at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Good evening, it's nice to be here. I'm going to read a few paragraphs from the story, If Love Were All. This story deals with the efforts of a London agency to rescue children from Nazi-occupied Europe during the Second World War. The children came, wave after wave of them. Polish children, Austrian children, Hungarian children, German children. Some came like parcels bought from the governments who withheld passports from their parents. These children wore coats, and each carried a satchel. Some came in unruly bands, having lived like squirrels in the mountains or like rats by the rivers. Some came escorted by social workers who couldn't wait to get rid of them. Few understood English. Some knew only Yiddish. Some had infectious diseases. Some seemed feeble-minded but it turned out that they had been only temporarily enfeebled by hardship. Mrs. Levenger, who directed the agencies, told each group that they were being sent to safe places. Siblings would not be separated. Their hosts would not be Jewish, but they would be kind. I'm not Jewish either, said a dark boy. Ah, Pierre, reproved an older boy. It's all right here. They slept for a night or two in a seedy hotel near the Waterloo Station. Mrs. Levenger and Sonia, her assistant, stayed in the hotel too, intending to sleep. They were always tired because the bombing had begun. But the women failed to sleep for the children, not crying, they rarely cried, wandered through the halls or hid in closets smoking cigarettes or went up and down in the lift. The next day, or the next day but one, Sonia and Mrs. Levenger escorted them to their quarters in the countryside and deposited them with stout families on farms, these Viennese who had never seen a cow, or left them in hastily assembled orphanages staffed with elderly school teachers, these Berliners who had known only the tender hands of nursemaids or stashed them in a bishop's palace, these Polish children for whom Christians were the devil. The Viennese kids might have found the palace suitable. The Hungarians would have formed a vigorous troop within the orphanage. The little Poles, familiar with chickens, might have been comfortable on the farms. But the billets rarely matched the children. The organization took what it could get. Thank you.